Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video, hope you guys are all doing well, and in today's video I have a matchup guide of sorts to give you guys with 3.0 Expo Cycle against Goblin Giant deck. So as you guys can see, I'm currently 6-0 in a GC, and 4 out of the 6 games were against Goblin Giant deck. So I've beaten Goblin Giant Bowler, Little Prince Fireball, Goblin Giant Sparky Rage, Goblin Giant Recruits, Evo Recruits, and Goblin Giant Bowler Lightning Evo Bats. So all these are different variations of Goblin Giant, and this is such a broken archetype in the meta in general because Goblin Giant is so strong. They did not revert any aspect of the buff it got back in August this year, a 6% HP buff, and it's just been one of the best cards in the entire game ever since. So I'll be showing you guys kind of a breakdown of each of these matches, and a lot of people have been asking me for this on the main channel. This is of course going on SK777, uh, just, you know, the channel where I don't really edit much, I just do chill vibes and recordings and I guess matchup guides, because people did ask me to make some, especially against this deck, so I'll be doing exactly that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let's get right into the match breakdown. So I'll be starting with Goblin Giant recruits and this is honestly as i said uh pretty meta like i actually see this a fair amount and just very toxic like evo recruits goblin giant that's already 13 elixir uh across two cards like how can you realistically play a deck like that i don't really understand but it's just so broken so why not anyway i just expo right here it's a bit aggressive but i feel like it's okay to do i knight as well to protect my archer to make sure number one i get the skeleton dragon down number two i can maybe get a counter push off of this he does end up going for what looks to be a fisherman he has it selected what does he go for he honestly should have gone for a little prince that would have been a pretty good offensive uh initiative maybe he still goes for one now or minions minions come down i'm actually gonna get a baby expo lock i feel like he kind of messed up maybe he wanted to conserve his uh, Little Prince, that's the only thing I can think of, but he definitely should have gone. Little Prince would have easily defended the entire thing, but anyways, generally speaking, I do like being aggressive in single elixir in all these matchups, guys, because it's going to be pretty tough to get a lock in uh, double and onwards. At least normal Goblin Giant. Goblin Giant Sparky I like chilling against, but normal Goblin Giant I like doing... Uh, pretty aggressive single elixir uh, gameplay so i do go for an expo pretty aggro and i think i force out a fireball which is honestly fine uh, my skeleton's here and i am able to kill most of that and then i can go for my ice spirit for the lp honestly lp ability would have been a good play here on his end i don't think my opponent knew it but as you can see i'm obviously back to my evo archers so he could have baited them out by going ability because i would have had to play them and then I would not have had Evil Archers in cycle for his upcoming Evil Recruits. Nonetheless, what I do when I get Evil Recruits, or Evil Archers rather, in this matchup, is I just split them in the back and get ready to defend. So he goes for his own Evo Recruits all in the back, as you can see, very high skill uh, play. But I'm basically going to get ready to full defend this, because there's no way you're going to go in uh, to Evo Recruits. I mean, you can, honestly, but I don't really recommend it. And as you can see, Evo Archers do crazy work against the Recruits. Sadly, uh, the left one gets taken out, but the right one is still putting in work. And as you can see, it is actually very defendable with the help of the Evo Archers. So that's why I like cycling Archers as often as I can. I believe I take this Fireball value on the Fisherman because it is worth taking. Yeah, so he kind of messed up giving me that free Fireball there. And tries to capitalize on it with an aggressive Goblin Giant, but I go for my easy log to take it out. Knight to tank for the Tesla, and then Tesla to subsequently defend with the Goblin Giant. And, uh pretty easily taken care of once again i'm back to my archers and i stack them in the right this time uh he does get a fireball off on three archers plus tower so honestly pretty high value fireball but i'm not too worried about it i just get my knight down is gonna full defend this lp and as you can see the only damage he's actually gotten so far has been with fireball on the tower he hasn't actually gotten any connections because my defense is pretty immaculate and i'm just kind of controlling the pace you know center tesla's Always cycling archers as well, by the way. Very important because, uh, especially if uh, they're going to be getting back to their evil recruits, you want to get back to evil archers as often as you possibly can in this matchup. So, that honestly could be a fireball on the LP. Do I take it? I believe I... Okay, I don't actually. Maybe I could have, but I don't there. Um, he does mess up going ability, but fails to uh, tank for his LP in time. So Evil Archer melts that, and he gets a fireball off, but my Archer gets some damage in the left, so now, honestly, I have the availability to go in both lanes. But you can see that I have not gone for a single Expo in the last, like, two minutes. So I get went for the early Expos to pressure, 
but recently it's been all spell cycle because there's no real point going super aggro by the way pretty important here guys i go for my archers first in the sequence then i log knight and all the cycle cards and that's pretty minor it might seem but it's a very important thing because you want to get back to your archers as often as you can again you are playing evo archers you need to cycle to your evo as much as you possibly can so it is very crucial to get that down i believe i do go for my evo archers here because I sadly didn't have a choice. That was a bit unfortunate. Honestly, what I could have done is maybe gone for them, like, here to get the power shot ability. But honestly, it's fine. Like, I'm okay with them dying. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. And here I don't fireball the fishermen just because I already pre load. I felt it was a bit aggressive, so I didn't. And I anyway get a really high value fireball here on, like, three recruits and the skelly drag. So, really good stuff. I believe now I go for defensive expo. So you guys will notice I waited till basically triple elixir to go for the defensive expo. And the reason for that is because defensive expos aren't the best. Expo only has 30 seconds of lifetime. So you don't really want to be going for uh, defensive expos consistently. I'd rather, you know, just uh, take them and triple where they get a ton of value actually. That's a really nice log in the left. I'll elaborate more on that later as well, by the way. But basically just chilling and defending and as you can see i'm separating everything expo and tesla center setup and then archers in the right so you can't really fireball everything he'd have to choose one of them uh, to fireball off and he inevitably ends up just not fireballing anything which is like the worst case for him now i believe he does maybe fireball my archers but it's a bit too late and anyway he's kind of playing bad by giving me fireball value on his tower consistently you know he's done the LP, he's done Fisherman a bunch of times, maybe even Minions. And I say thanks just because he's playing Goblin Jet Recruits, you know, I don't like the deck at all. Don't have much respect for this deck, so I say thanks. But honestly, this is a pretty manageable matchup, I'd say, with this specific version because he doesn't have arrows, doesn't have pump, and I have evil archers, so. Yeah, they're pretty good in defense, as you can see also. Almost no offensive expos past single elixir, that's just how it is. But on that point about um, the defensive expo in triple, it's because elixir just flows faster in triple. So the 30 seconds of a defensive expo in triple are worth more than 30 seconds of an expo in double, if that makes sense. So uh, that's why I feel like they get value in triple. Plus, like, two defensive expos, you know, get you through the entirety of triple elixir. Anyways, this was a crazy match, guys. You guys will enjoy this one, because this one is uh very important actually like and it was very nice as well like um i got a crazy clutch comeback so i hope you guys are ready for this prepare yourself because i was down so much like this is a really bad matchup in my opinion he has evo bats he has lightning um he has bowler so like everything you don't want to see in a deck basically he goes fisherman in the back i believe i just fireball it i'd still stand by this play i feel like fireballing a fisher in single is not really a big deal uh oftentimes when you see fisherman these days it is going to be this goblin giant deck which is kind of a pain, honestly, but it's okay. Uh, center Tesla is standard again against the LP. And Bowler the back. Never go Knight against a Bowler in the back, guys. It's kind of a big mistake. Because uh, Knight will just walk up and the Bowler will get a lot of value against it. So I really don't advise doing that. And I believe he actually gets a lot of damage here because he does go for a good Goblin Giant. I mean, we're even on Elixir. He can ignore that Knight and go all in here. And he does. And I can't really do much about it because I don't have Tesla back in cycle. So that was just a bit unfortunate. I believe I get a nice Ice Spirit on all these bats. I really need to. Yeah, I hit almost every bat. But still, look at this damage coming in. And that's basically a good game, honestly. If I'm the opponent playing this deck, losing from this position is criminal. So this is pretty much a good game already. And obviously, uh, I don't give up. But the main premise here is since he has lightning, I mean, this deck almost exclusively runs lightning. So the main premise is going to be constant opposite lane pressure. Going same lane is going to be really dumb because he can just lightning my expo in the weak side tower. So I go for my expo, try and get an evil archer's punish on the bowler, which I do actually get. It's a really good catch. And then I log the bowler back and he does get a nice lightning off. But I get some nice damage too. You know, I get maybe like 500 or so, which is decent. Wish I got more. But uh, it's okay. Honestly, it's acceptable for now. I'm slowly coming back, I guess. And I'm, like, sort of even on Elixir. Uh, he doesn't go goblins for that Ice Spirit, so I'm slowly catching up. But, I mean, the damage is done. I still think this is an unlosable position if you're my opponent. So, uh, I'm excited to show you guys the comeback. But I think the only play is really to keep pressuring. Just because I'm down. If I wasn't down Elixir, I feel like I'd play more passively. Maybe that's a... Or down damage, rather. I feel like I'd play more passively. Maybe that's a mistake as well. Because, uh... Like, sw switching up your playstyle to play suboptimally just to try and make a comeback isn't great. Oh, so that was a terrible fireball, I'm going to be honest. I missed three of the bats, so I don't know what I was doing, guys. Honestly, that was really bad by me. Um, and as a result, I have to overcommit on defense here, and then I'm just down basically five or whatever elixir. So really not looking good. I stack archers because obviously I'm trying to get to my evil archers. That's basically the name of the game. Center Tesla, too. And he does, I believe, just lightning. 
uh, which he can't afford to do. And my knight, unfortunately, is a pretty bad knight, actually. Because it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't protect my Tesla. It doesn't really accomplish what I want it to accomplish. But now I can get a nice counter push. Because uh, he did just go for his uh, really aggressive expenditure. But he's already back to a lightning. It's so annoying because Little Prince gives him three card cycle. This is what I hate about Little Prince, guys. It's a three elixir champion. But heavy decks get to get away with like ridiculous stuff because they get bailed out by the LP. Either by the ability or even by the three card cycle. And so now I'm really mad. I'm frustrated. I'm like, oh my god, my push went nowhere. How is he back to Evo? Or how is he back to lightning? That's ridiculous. And so now I go in again. This time to force out a Goblin Giant, and this is the expo that basically sets me up to win. Doesn't win, but sets me up to win, because I force out both the Goblin Giant and the Bowler. So already forced out his main responses to my expo. I get a Tesla down and Archers, because I have a feeling he's going to Lightning, and now it's do or die, so... Important note as well, by the way, guys, I am back to my evil archers. And I also really catch this garden. If I didn't catch that, would have been game over too. But now it's time to punish. I go for my expo. And he does not go for a Goblin Giant for whatever reason. And I go for my Evil Archers here, guys, because I have a feeling he's going to play something in the middle over here. So that's why I go for them in the corner, to snipe something and get the power shot full utility. Which does come in really clutch. And then here my logic is, okay, he's not back to Lightning, and all I can do is Fireball the Bowler to kill it earlier and get a lock. Like, I'm not going to be able to Spell Cycle. So, when you're in an impossible comeback position like this, you really have to Fireball their troops. Like, it's all you can really do. So that is actually what I'd end up doing. I Fireball the Bowler, and I end up clipping the little prince as you can see beautiful fireball he gets one lp hit on the expo and he's not ready for these archers to counter push i pre-log to knock the fisherman back and I actually win that is an unbelievable comeback so that was a beautiful win but i don't think that really shows how to play the matchup that well i guess you could say i made a mistake in single uh and kind of like lost but that was still a beautiful comeback because i do think it's a really bad matchup honestly for this deck i lost with this deck quite a few times on top ladder for my ladder finish last season and uh yeah really good comeback again remember that trick of fireballing their troop to kill it early it's like the only thing you can do catch them off guard as well Let's go for the third match here, Goblin Giant Sparky. A much more tame matchup in comparison to the other two. Although, again, I believe that Recruits 1 isn't too bad because he doesn't have arrows or pump, uh, both of which would make it worse. But uh, still, you know, it's uh, annoying for sure. And since he rages, I believe I Expo here. I think it's a good play, honestly, because he's down Elixir, if you think about it. Um, and I have a counter push anyway. Goblin Giant does unfortunately come down. I just go for my Ice Spirit to stall in place. And then I go Skeletons after it locks onto the Expo. Because I recognized, okay, Expo is going to die. And I don't want to go Skeletons first and let them die. Expo isn't that important to keep alive. What's important is to defend the subsequent Goblin Giant. So basically, guys, the principle of single elixir like Expos. Most of the time, you're going to let them die. And then you're basically going to defend after the fact. That's the goal, to take no damage. And I've ga gathered more intel about his deck now anyways. I go Archers for the LP. And uh, minions come down, which is honestly decent, but I can actually expo now, I believe. This is a perfect situation to expo. Look at how I've messed up his cycle. Like, really bad. So I Ice Spirit first, and then Skeletons late, and I believe this is actually a lock, because uh, he wasn't expecting the mini P.E.K.K.A. to die. And now it's good game, so... This basically just speaks to single elixir pressure. Honestly, could have Fireball logged this, um, but I think it's fine to not as well. You know, that's game-winning damage. Like, it's an important factor, guys. Like, you know, playing... Um, smart and safe and so even though you know i could have won also i cut this guardian back instead of letting it walk up so i can obviously get my power shot on my evil archers maximized but it's pretty easy to say oh you want to just win the game in one expo lock like you just want to win and be done whatever but it is also pretty important to recognize that uh, you're not going to win off of one lock all the time and you can also win off of one lock even if it doesn't take tower like this 1000 damage lock is enough to win the game literally he has fireball rage so if i defend perfectly he only gets spell damage on my tower and i get like some logs on his he's gonna lose that's the fact of the matter anyways i reset with a center tesla uh pretty standard stuff and honestly the game is over but I'm, it's obviously still gonna have to go the full distance so i'll show you guys how to play this matchup regardless i believe i offensive expo here yeah which is a good offensive expo because he's down elixir and I actually do commit to this because it's double elixir I can afford to. And I pre-cycled my archers. By the way, pre-cycling archers first, very important. Again, it always comes back to this principle of cycling to your evil archers. That's so key with this deck. Because evil archers really carry this deck. Like, Expo is not a very strong deck. Uh, hasn't been for a while. But evil archers are a very strong card. Maybe like a top 3 card in the game right now. So, definitely want to utilize them to their max. Again, center Tesla is key. And I'm in for a tough defense here. But I do have my evo archers for his evo knight so it's not too big of a deal 
I believe I just split them in the middle. He'd get a really high value fireball here if he does take it. I don't think he does, though. And I go for my offensive expo, because honestly, he's down quite a lot. Misses the Sparky, and now it's good game. Even if he hit it, by the way, that still would have been good game, because expo would have been on the Sparky. I probably would have gotten a lock out of this, or worst case, you know, I would have at least um, killed the Sparky and gotten a really good offensive position. So either way, uh, pretty much a perfect game. He got literally no damage on my tower, except that one rage he cycled right at the very start. So... Yeah, pretty good game against Sparky, guys. Single elixir pressure is key, and subsequent pressure is key, too. Let's go into the last one. I believe this one wasn't as bad as the first one where I had to come back. This is, again, Goblin Giant Bowler. But this guy does have a Fireball, which makes it a bit more manageable, but still, he has Evil Archers as well, which is, again, a really good card. And so it's going to make it pretty tough to contend with. So I'll show you guys how exactly I was able to do that. So Knight first play isn't too big of a deal as he splits Archers. doesn't really tell me what he has. And then Bowler is honestly uh, pretty annoying to see and i think the only play is a center tesla honestly like you don't really get to uh go in against a bowler either because i mean that's a really good fireball as well by the way but if i go offensive expo opposite to a bowler and he's a goblin giant like i'm gonna have to still defend the bowler and i'm also gonna have to counter push against the goblin giant or rather i'm still gonna have to defend the bowler and i'm gonna have to defend the goblin giant so that's two things to defend i would probably do it if uh I had the perfect cycle, but I don't think I did this time. Anyway, honestly, pretty suboptimal situation. I have to go for my archers, which I don't want to do, but I had to because the bowler would have gotten some hits on the tower. That might have been game-changing damage, honestly. I Ice Spirit, really good counter push, forcing out the archers. He doesn't actually go for it, so I actually get like three archer hits, as you can see. So Ice Spirit Archer is a huge play. Really nice micro play. I'm down Elixir, but I'm up in damage because of that, and I think it was worth it. Now the play is definitely just center Tesla, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if I'm looking at this hand right now, that's the play I would make. Especially after seeing an LP, certainly Center Tesla. As you guys can see in this meta against Goblin Giant deck, Center Tesla is very key. It's always been a very key play, though, honestly. Um, he's going in again, very aggro. Don't really agree with this, but, you know, he can do what he wants. And now, I'm back to my evil archers, so it is time to use them. He goes for a rage. Don't agree with that play. And everything melts, as you can see. And he might be fireballing, but I think he's about to lose, honestly. If he fireballs, yeah, he loses now, because what was that? He missed... He tried to hit both, but he missed, and now I know it's a good game. I call it good luck, because I know it's over. So this is, again, single elixir punishing. Like, this is how you beat these decks, guys, especially against worse players. Also, for whatever reason, he goes for goblins, even though he had evil archers in hand. I go for a log. Very important, guys. I could have let this go and uh, let the expo die, but I basically want to, like, win the game right now. So any more damage from my expo, I'll take. So that's why I logged uh, preemptively to stall the archers out a bit and maximize value off my expo. Just to make sure it gets into fireball range, essentially. And then he goes for a counter push. Um, I take one archer hit, and then I go for my ice spirit late. You know, archer raged up is insane. Pretty much melts the Tesla, but that's still a pretty easy defense. And now, defense against this deck is very easy, guys. The only issue is getting damage, but if you can punish them in single like I did, um, you can defend easily. So defense effects were pretty easy. And, uh, like, anti-fireball, of course, to the right side tower. Goes for a fisherman. I believe I just take a Fireball on the Bowler and Little Prince here, that's definitely- or even just the LP, that's honestly still worth it. Wanna take that out. And then this is just Knight Archer's Tesla. Standard defense, very standard, very bread and butter. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much over at this point. Ice Spirit as well, just cause I thought it was gonna lock on a tower actually. And I start BMing cause he was BMing a bit too. And also he's playing Goblin Giant, so I don't have much respect for that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video guys. Very chill one, just, you know, a matchup guide against Goblin Giant decks, so. Hopefully this helps you guys out with the matchup. I think I might make the thumbnail, like, uh, one of the wins. I don't know which would be better, the Recruits one or the Lightning one. I'm trying to think. Um, but again, that is pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this matchup, feel free to ask. And I'll try my best to answer in the comments, because SK777 is a much more underrated channel than my main one. Like, I don't get many views on it, so I'm probably going to be more receptive to comments there. But that's what it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.